my name is Adam Maciaszek. Uh, I'm a senior machine learning engineer in DeepSense AI. And the topic of my today's presentation is context extension challenges in uh, large language models. And uh, the reason for the selection of the topic is um, basically the importance of context length that we observed in uh, one of our projects that we did for uh, our customer. And that was in the coding LLMs uh, area. And uh, yeah, there's also a lot of interesting research going on in this field. So that's uh, basically the, the reason. Uh, when it comes to the, today's presentation, we will start with um, basically discussing the context length. Why is that important? Um, yeah, we will say about context in the context of transformers, pun intended. Uh, we will quickly recap the um, positional encoding methods because they are quite important in uh, extending context. And then we will move to the methods themselves with uh, alibi, positional interpolation in uh, rope and uh, with pose. And of course, we will conclude um, the presentation with some outcomes. So uh, let's start with discussing uh, actually, um, yeah, what's the picture when it comes to the context length in current mainstream models uh, in, in uh, large language models. So let's say the basic uh, context length that we observed for the last few years was 2000 tokens. And uh, that was both in the um, open source field and in the closed source field. So um, Llama model, for example, also comes with uh, 2000 tokens. But in the recent months, there is some kind of a movement to also extend this uh, context length. And uh, for example, Lama 2 had a context of 4,000 tokens and uh, Mistral uh, 8,000 tokens. And also there are some other models that uh, address um, specifically the, the topic of the context length and uh, that have their context kind of longer. Uh, when it comes to GPT models, uh, GPT-3 also used to have uh, 2,000 tokens context length and uh, Chat GPT models uh, have this context a bit longer with GPT 3.5, 4,000 and the GPT 4, 8,000 tokens. Mm, and these last two models also come with uh, extended uh, versions. So if you use API, you can actually choose to uh, use different model and use uh, the extended version of GPT 3.5 or GPT 4 up to 16 or 32,000 tokens. Mm, and it's also worth to mention uh, the Claude 2 model, uh, which is also a closed source model. And it's quite renowned for being a very long context model with 100,000 uh, context size. Mm, OK, so maybe right now let's take a step back and think if 2,000 tokens is a lot or, or not. So uh, actually, 2,000 tokens is about 1,000. 500 words, which is uh, about six pages of A4 documents fully typed out. Um, so that may seem a lot. And actually, it's usually enough for most of the tasks that we uh, use LLMs for. Uh, when we just want to summarize something or we ask some question to um, language model, 2000 will usually be enough. But there are situations when we would like to have this context extended. and. This is, for example, the situation where we uh, write or want to summarize very long text. So we can imagine uh, having our LLM to write a book for us, because why not? And uh, in such case, um, so that the model remembers all it actually wrote, uh, all it generated, we need to have a long context size. And another use case is uh, what I mentioned, uh, coding tasks. So this is something that we faced in our project. So when you'd like to um, produce uh, some coding uh, suggestions for the user, and you'd like the model to have the knowledge about huge repositories of code with multiple files with many lines of code, then you usually need a big context size. Uh, another interesting use case is uh, the role playing, and there is a whole community that uses uh, language models uh, as game masters in the role playing games. Uh, that's quite interesting use case. And um, another one is uh, building some kind of a long term memory 
and AI assistant. So you can imagine having a LLM as some kind of personal assistant that remembers all your interactions between uh, one year ago, for example, and uh, uh, yeah, remembers all all you all your discussions. Uh, so in that case, you also need very long context size. Mm. So now maybe let's think, um, what are the challenges in extending the context? Why is it so difficult to have a transformer model to have long context sizes? So there are a few characteristics in transformers that actually make it a bit challenging. So the first one is uh, quadratic complexity and attention layer. Uh, and Basically, because of that, uh, when we train um, transformers, uh, we want to have a context kind of limited to reduce the memory consumption and reduce the costs of the training itself. So um, because of that, um, yeah, the, the context needs to be limited during the training. Um, on the other hand, uh, architecturally, transformers may actually handle inputs of any length. So uh, you can actually have uh, your transformer trained on 2000 uh, tokens length and then launch inference on, let's call it 100,000 tokens. And when it comes to the code itself, it will work. Uh, you can only get the memory error, but uh, architecture will work. Uh, but uh, here comes the uh, third characteristic of the transformer, which is the order invariance and uh, position encoding that we need to use. So um, because of the fact that um, transformer itself cannot, in, inside the attention layer, cannot comprehend uh, what is the order of the input. So for transformer, the sentences, the dog is chasing the cat is the same as the cat is chasing the dog. Uh, so we need to actually encode the order before the input goes into the attention operation. And because of this uh, positional encoding um, and because uh, during training, we train on limited context size, uh, the transformer only learns how to use these positional encodings up to some length. And this is making it uh, challenging to, yeah, to have uh, transformers with uh, really, really long uh, context sizes. Okay, so now let's think, what actually can we do to have uh, longer context in transformers? So there are a few groups of methods here. And uh, one of them uh, is based on some kind of a sparse attention. And in this group uh, of methods, mm, when we have our attention mechanism, we are not attending to all the past tokens, but only to some kind of a subset of tokens. So, um, we can uh, do, for example, some kind of a um, uh, some kind of a window attention, and attend only to some kind of a window of uh, of the tokens. And uh, in this way, we can actually make our context longer uh, using stream L streaming LLM. We can even make it uh, endless. Let's let's call it with uh, language model producing endless stream of uh, uh, of outputs. But because we are using the sparse attention, we are not attending to all the previous tokens. So we are losing some kind of information from the past. We are uh, not able to use all the information that we uh, actually uh, have in our input. Mm. So this method may be used to produce some kind of a long, coherent and style outputs. But uh, yeah, as I say, we lose some kind of, uh, we lose some um, uh, knowledge uh, from the input. Second group is uh, memory based methods. And these methods based on some idea of having some kind of external uh, cache or external memory where we store some temporary results of uh, attention. And uh, here, but particularly interesting is uh, Focus Transformer paper with uh, Long Lama model uh, authored by uh, Szymon Tworkowski and our colleague uh, Piotr Miłosz. This uh, paper got into new reaps for this year. 
Uh, but we are not going to cover that uh, today. I believe that uh, uh, deserves a deep talk uh, on its own. And we are actually going to cover these uh, context extension methods uh, with Alibi and other methods uh, listed in the, uh, in the bottom of the slide. Uh, one disclaimer, what we are not going to cover is that when we extend the context using these methods uh, and we want to use uh, long context, we actually need uh, more memory. But uh, yeah, the memory is not the topic of the today's presentation. This is just something that you need to have in mind that the context extension also extends uh, memory requirements. Uh, okay, so we know more or less what are the um, groups. Um, and uh, now before we jump into the methods themselves, let's do a quick recap of uh, how uh, positional and, uh, is encoded into transformer models. So here you can see the original method that comes from attention is all you need paper. And uh, on the, uh, on the bottom, there is the input uh, to the network with this uh, rose um, background, let's say. And uh, this input goes into, um, we, we add positional encoding into this input uh, before we get uh, into multi-head attention operation. And uh, on the right, you can see that this uh, positional encoding is uh, comes in a, some form of a, sine and cosine functions. So for example, for uh, position zero, we look at the values of sine and cosine functions. Uh, for this position, we create some kind of a vector of the values and we add this ver vector to the input embedding vector. And in this way, the transformer internally will be able to um, understand the positions of the um, of the vectors uh, and it was one of the methods it was the original one uh, as um, yeah published in uh, original transformer architect architecture and over the last few years there came a few other methods of encoding uh, the positional information with uh, learned uh, positional embeddings with some uh, relative uh, approaches with um, t5 bias uh, alibi and actually we are going today uh, to focus on alibi method and on rotary positional uh, embeddings okay so uh, now actually when we have this background of how this positional information is encoded we can uh, go to the first method uh, of um, extension and uh, this is called alibi and on its own um, Alibi is another way to encode the position in the transformer, but uh, in the same time, this uh, allows us to have longer context in our um, in our model. And here, the position is encoded in this way that uh, we are actually um, not using positional encoding at all. Uh, and we are modifying the multi-head attention operation. So the first operation inside the uh, multi-head attention is a multiplication of query and key matrices. And uh, here, uh, so on the left is uh, what we are actually always using in the multi-head attention, this query and key uh, multiplication. And here, additionally, we are adding uh, some kind of a linear bias into uh, the result of this uh, of this multiplication. And um, because as you can see, um, this uh, bias uh, linearly goes down, we are kind of penalizing the more distant tokens. So uh, when the tokens are quite distant apart from each other, uh, we have a lower chance to assign it with high attention score. Uh, because of the way how this uh, matrix on the right is uh, is constructed. Mm. And the authors of this paper show that uh, you can use such method to encode the position uh, and then uh, extrapolate and just um, 
provide uh, the model trained use, uh, using uh, this alibi with longer sequences, and it will be able to extrapolate and use these longer sequences um, out of the shelf. So yeah, this is quite nice and simple method, but uh, there are a few issues. So here in the uh, upper side, you can see what models are using the alibi positional encodings. And uh, if you don't know these models, it's uh, okay. The, the point is that this is just a small group of models and the most popular models like Llama are not actually using Alibi. So we cannot extend the context uh, using this method. And um, the reason for it is probably also the fact that uh, after the release, um, it was found that the extrapolation doesn't work that well as uh, the authors claim in the paper. So you still need to kind of um, fine tune the model uh, to get longer context. And um, basically the, um, the way that um, this positional encoding work is not as good as some other methods. So uh, this is not very commonly used method. Uh, yeah, and now we are moving to to more common method that is right now used. And this is based on uh, rotary position embeddings. So on its own, uh, rotary position embeddings is just another method to encode the position inside the transformer. And here, instead of uh, this linear bias or instead of these sine and cosine functions, what we do uh, is we, um, we basically apply some kind of rotation to the input vectors. So uh, in the bottom of the, on the left, uh, you can see some input uh, enhanced transformer with rotary position embedding. So these are our tokens and each token is represented as some kind of a vector. And uh, we split uh, each of these vectors into pairs of values we take these pairs of values and we rotate them to encode our um, position. And uh, the um, rotation angle uh, depends on the position. So uh, if we uh, have the position one, then we rotate by some angle. If we go to position two, then the angle of the rotation will be two times bigger, etc., etc. So we are actually doing some kind of a spinning operation for the vector to encode this uh, this positional information. And uh, what is quite important here is that uh, this angle also depends on some kind of a theta um, parameter. And as you can see uh, in the uh, lower left um, corner, this uh, theta uh, changes across the vector. So uh, in the beginning, this theta parameter is bigger. And as we go to the further elements of the vector, this uh, is getting kind of uh, smaller. Uh, so for the last pair of the, um, uh, of the values, the, um, the rotation will be much smaller. And the idea here is that the, um, the big rotations that we apply uh, allow transformer model to um, say what is the order of the tokens. So based on this fast rotating angle, we are uh, able to say the difference between the token one and token two or token 100 and token 101, etc., etc. And based on this uh, slow uh, rotating uh, hand, we are more or less able to say what is the region of the input. So here um, we are able to say whether the token is in the beginning of the in input or in the end of the input. Um, yeah, so that's the idea of, uh, for the rotary position embeddings. And as I say, this is uh, just another method to encode the position in the transformer. Uh, and now let's think how we can uh, extend, extend the context when we use such uh, positional embedding. 
Okay, before we, we go to um, the methods to extend of, of, of extensions, uh, here is the list of the models that are actually using rotary position embeddings. And here you can see metal, uh, models like Palm, like uh, GPT-Neo and GPT-J uh, from uh, Eluter AI and also famous Llama models with all uh, its descendants like Alpaca, Vicuña, Orca and many other models. Mm, there are also Falcon or Mistral models, so quite uh, great representatives here. Uh, yeah, so now we want to extend uh, these models. So what we can actually do, uh, in the upper row, there is the extrapolation. So what we could uh, do is we could take uh, the model train on a sequences of 2000 tokens and just uh, fine tune with sequences of 4,000 tokens without changing anything. Because we will be just applying uh, subsequent rotations for if we have tokens of uh, for positions over 2,000 tokens. Uh, and this is not bad, but uh, the researchers found out that this method doesn't extrapolate really well. And it requires long fine tuning to actually uh, make the model uh, understand what is actually going on in this unseen range uh, with this uh, yeah orange background. So um, the researchers from uh, Meta together with some Redditors on the uh, local Llama subreddit uh, found out that instead of doing this extrapolation, we can do some kind of interpolation. So we are not uh, modifying the distribution of the, mm, the distribution of the inputs by just reducing the angle of the rotations. So if we reduce the, the angle of these rotations that we apply to the vectors by two times, we can actually extend the, talk, uh, the context length by two times and the yeah we can reduce the the rotations four times to get the context size four times bigger mm. so yeah as i say we are just uh, reducing this angle of rotations linearly and um, that work not uh, not badly and uh, the authors showed uh, that they were able to um, extend the context size of a uh, LAMA model from 2,000 tokens up to 32,000 uh, tokens. Uh, when it comes to perplexity reduction, it was observed up to 16,000 tokens. So that may be considered some kind of effective um, extension uh, length here. But uh, the problem is that the performance slightly deteriorated on the original context. So when we actually didn't need the uh, extended context, but the task required just the original 2000, uh, there was some deterioration in the, um, in the performance. So uh, yeah, the authors were wondering what's the reason. And apparently um, the hypothesis is that the reason is uh, that when we linearly downscale the, um, this rotation angle and we reduce the spinning speed uh, that we apply to the vectors, transformer model kind of loses the ability to tell the difference between the tokens that are really close apart. So when this rotation is uh, of the yellow uh, of the green uh, hand is uh, slower the model is not able to tell the difference between the tokens that are very close apart and uh, the newer methods focus on some kind of idea of nonlinear scaling so in these methods we keep the high uh, angle of rotations for uh, this, uh, let's call it uh, green theta parameters. And based on that, um, the transformer model will be able to uh, tell the difference between the, the order of the tokens. And we downscale this uh, slow rotation. So we downscale this uh, blue mm, hand. And based on that, actually the, the context is, uh, is extended. 
so that's the idea here and uh, yeah the authors show that uh, this works much better so the blue line here is the uh, linear scaling and the green line is the uh, nonlinear scaling so we get to the much lower perplexities but still there is a little bit uh, edge and the original method uh, the, the original model uh, which is the uh, gray line uh, is a little bit better on the original context so this is something that we need to have in mind that um yeah that we get some drop in performance uh, on the original context size okay so that was the um, the method that was based on the rotary position em embeddings and now Let's quickly go to the last method, which is uh, called pose for positional skipwise training. And here quickly, the, the method is really simple. And um, it works in this way that when we um, train the models, for example, we have sequences of 2000 tokens, we kind of imitate that some of the tokens are uh, have higher positions. So uh, in the first row, you can see some kind of a sequence and uh, we uh, get some random number of 511 and up to 511 tokens we provide the positional encoding originally and then we apply some kind of a random skip and the rest of the input is encoding as if it was uh, much further apart and uh, in this way the model is able to uh, learn how to use this distant uh, positional encodings and apparently uh, this is enough to uh, to also extend the, uh, the context size so very simple method but a very very successful one mm. and here there is also some kind of a fancy visualization but uh, what i'd like to point here what is important is that this post method is compatible with uh, the methods that I discussed before with this linear and nonlinear scaling. So you can join this pose with other methods and uh, get to the really good uh, results. Okay, so uh, for the end, let's quickly compare um, these, uh, these context extension methods that we discussed. Uh, so first, this uh, alibi extrapolation. Uh, the good feature of, uh, of this method is that it doesn't require any changes in how the positional encodings work. So when we use this method, we are not risking that we are going to break the model and, or reduce uh, um, its performance on, on the original context. But uh, the disadvantage is that it can be only applied to some kind of limited group of models that are actually using this uh, alibi positional encodings. And Apparently, these uh, alibi position encodings work a little bit worse because most of the researchers do not want to use them and they prefer to use uh, rotary positional embeddings. So when we extend the context using these rotary positional embeddings, uh, yeah, the advantage is that we are actually getting quite good results. And uh, another advantage is that um, this... Uh, this uh, rotary positional embedding is used in most of the new open source models with uh, llama models uh, as as an example but still the disadvantage is that these are not all of the models so this is some kind of a group the group is uh, is great but these are not all of the models mm, and because of the change that we apply in the in this rotations we actually observe some kind of deterioration in the performers on the original context. So uh, this is this is some important uh, feature here. And when it comes to the pose uh, in the end, advantage is that it's very simple and it can be applied to any positional encoding method. It doesn't also require more memory during fine tuning because we are showing still the same uh, sequences length, but just uh, uh, applying some kind of a skip inside and uh, yeah it can be joined with other methods so we can join pose with uh, rotary positional embeddings or with alibi and probably important thing here is to say that this pose combined with rotary positional embeddings is probably a state-of-the-art uh, method right now mm, but yeah the disadvantage that on its own the, the pose method may be a little bit too straightforward straightforward to achieve uh, the best results. 
Okay, and a few final remarks in the end. Uh, what is quite important to remember is that uh, when you want to have some model with context, uh, context length extended, you usually need some kind of a fine tuning process. This maybe is not, uh, this may not require very long fine tuning, but still, this is not the case that you uh, have the model and you apply some magic operation and you have the context extended. Mm, the second thing is that uh, this extension may impact the quality on the original context size. Uh, the third thing is that the, yeah, the benchmarks for uh, the evaluation of these long context sizes are kind of limited. Uh, so yeah, we were not discussing evaluation methods because uh, uh, we didn't have so much time, but yeah, there are, there are problems with evaluating these methods. Uh, but also there are some kind of new benchmarks that come with the release of giraffe paper and bamboo paper. So maybe with the wide adoption of these methods, we will get some improvement here. Uh, and last but not least, uh, yeah, memory constraints are still great limitation. So you need to remember that when you extend the context, you also need to have more memory to launch this uh, long context size models. So this is it uh, for today. Uh, thank you for your attention and uh, sorry for small time extension, uh, pun intended. Again, uh, thank you and bye-bye. See you.